I'll keep the microphone closed. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, I, I just uh, uh, said it's great pleasure to uh, be at user group meeting and talk after uh, Eugene, uh, our great friend, and I hope uh, it will be in person next time in uh, beautiful and sunny San Diego. Uh, okay, so um, uh, Again, it's uh, it's humbling uh, to talk after all the great developments uh, presented by uh, Ruben, Max, and uh, uh, Eugene. Uh, so I will um, sort of balance it uh, with some uh, practical application that we've done in the lab. So our lab is uh, focused on application of uh, molecular modeling. And uh, chem informatics to uh, better understanding of structure and function. We, for many years, we focused on uh, G protein couple receptors. Uh, uh, now we're sort of expanding it uh, a little bit. Uh, and uh, our goal is to uh, uh, to convert this better understanding of structure and function into uh, design of new molecules and. Uh, for uh, different applications uh, in uh, uh, clinically relevant targets. Uh, so we use uh, uh, two approaches, uh, one uh, of, of converting this uh, 3D knowledge. Uh, one is rational design of ligands and it's uh, sort of uh, mostly uh, I would say low tech uh, manual uh, design and uh, virtual screening that we take into giga scale. Okay, so um, in terms of uh, core technologies, uh, uh, no surprise, we are using uh, MALSOFT tools and uh, internal coordinate mechanics and always emphasize that uh, it's uh, a great platform. Uh, both in terms of uh, like modeling engine itself and then versatility of uh, like different tools that can be applied. Uh, so uh, uh, internal coordinate mechanics, uh, docking based on uh, ICM. Uh, for molecular dynamics, we uh, usually use Gromax, uh, but uh, the new availability of uh, MD in ICM is uh, pretty exciting, so we'll try that too. Um, the uh, uh, other important blocks uh, that uh, are very conveniently incorporated on ICM is bioinformatics, chemical informatics, and now machine learning. So uh, we apply this, uh, I mentioned, to rational design and screening, and that uh, I will uh, sort of uh, have two parts showing some examples of this. For, uh, for rational design, uh, 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 my favorite example uh, is uh, uh, our design of bitopic ligands that um, sort of based on uh, discovery about 10 years ago uh, that uh, G-protein couple receptors uh, have very interesting uh, sodium ion uh, smack in the center of seven transmembrane domain uh, it was discovered like in a very high resolution structures, 1.8 angstrom, uh, by seeing interactions, uh, very close uh, ion ion interactions, like 2.2 angstrom for closest atoms, uh, oxygen atoms, and also uh, five atom coordination, distinguish it from regular water. Uh, and uh, it turned out that this site is actually super conserved in whole class AGPCRs. It's like uh, 700 of them, and uh, probably in about 600 of them uh, with uh, some variations uh, sodium should bind. Uh, so that uh, makes a lot of uh, interesting um, uh, analysis for uh, like why, uh, uh, what, what is functional role of this sodium. But here we focus on practical application. So what if we, uh, so uh, this is agonist bound to GPCR and this is sodium and water cluster. So if we 
take an agonist, uh, it could be like a well-known agonist, and extend it to sodium side, sort of uh, uh, jam, uh, jam the sodium side uh, with uh, like allosteric moiety. What, what would happen? And actually, there are uh, known allosteric molecules uh, that binds to the side, uh, and we characterize them too. So uh, we know that this should modulate function. We don't know, uh, we didn't know uh, how, and uh, we now know only for a couple of receptors. So uh, uh, this, is, this is an example of design for uh, myopioid receptor where we started with fentanyl and extended it to sodium pocket, uh, so sort of flexible link, uh, linker. So, uh, Again, this uh, this is uh, sort of relatively low tech uh, <laughs> uh, approach where we used uh, ICM ligand editor. I, I would say it's a very underrated but very powerful tool uh, to generate uh, uh, different ideas in terms of molecular design. Uh, uh, it, of course, it should be followed by uh, full redocking and molecular dynamics, but uh, it, it is great in terms of uh, like giving uh, quickly some ideas, uh, giving attachment points and uh, testing thousands of fragments uh, at this point and so on. So uh, uh, we, we, uh, we've done uh, this type of design, like uh, uh, suggesting our chemists uh, like about a hundred different molecules. Of course, they uh, selected and synthesized the simplest one <laughs> shown here. <laughs> and it worked, uh, and um, uh, it, so uh, the this uh, and uh, they synthesized like a few uh, linker lengths, and the one that we predicted the best actually was the best uh, with uh, six carbon atoms connecting uh, fentanyl to uh, guana group here. Uh, it was uh, the structure of the uh, this ligand in myopioid receptor was solved by uh, Skiniotis and Stanford, uh, confirming uh, atom to atom like with 0.5 angstrom uh, accuracy the confirmation that we predicted. Uh, but what is uh, most interesting here is this uh, compound predictably had a very uh, interesting pharmacology. So uh, this. Uh, C3 to C C11 guano is like different uh, versions of linker here. Uh, C6 uh, was the most potent and it had very uh, specific, very different pharmacology, differentiated it from fentanyl. Um, uh, in terms of uh, both, um, uh, it, it has completely abolished uh, arresting signaling um and it it differentiate uh between different uh g protein subtypes as well uh and uh this was characterized uh, in vivo as well uh and so this slide show that we have antineception uh for this compound um and it's uh, mediated by myopioid receptor. This is another model of uh, uh, pain, neuropathic pain, and it also shows efficacy, uh, C6 guana here uh, at uh, 30 uh, nanomole concentration. Uh, the, uh, most importantly, uh, the, it didn't show uh, effects in um, uh, and they ask in vivo assay that uh, predict uh, different side effects, including uh, addiction potential, uh, uh, this uh, CPP, CPA assay, locomotor activity, and most importantly, respiratory depression. So for opioids, uh, this is the uh, the reason why about hundred thousand. Mostly young people die uh, in this country uh, every year uh, now. So uh, and uh, so this compound didn't have uh, a, any a respiratory depression. Uh, actually, in, in fact, it had some uh, respiratory uh, stimulation, <laughs> uh, which um, was not mediated by myopioid receptors. So it's uh, um, uh, interesting 
uh, side effect may be used for doping. Uh, well, uh, so uh, this is this this is one of the examples we uh, we have uh, a lot of collaborations with uh, chemists and uh, biochemists and in vivo biologists on uh, design of biotopic. So the, this particular design is also expanded to uh, delta opioid receptor. We have very interesting data on this, and uh, we are working on other classes, uh, other um, receptor in this class A GPCRs. Uh, we have uh, an interesting covalent design. So in this case, um, uh, we converted uh, naloxone into covalent naloxone uh, uh, binding to mu opioid receptor with suffix uh, reaction, very specific uh, uh, reaction. And it, uh, there is a lot of other application for uh, covalent uh, docking, uh, photoswitchable docking. Um, now we collaborate with uh, pioneers in this field, Trauner and uh, Levitz, uh, uh, and uh, developing um, uh, different um, tools uh, in opioid receptors and other. Uh, okay, so uh, that that's uh, uh, like manual design. Uh, now uh, let me switch to uh, what we are trying to do in terms of uh, gigascale screening. Uh, so, uh, okay, I probably I can skip this slide. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, in terms of virtual screening, we are um, uh, not novices in this field. We have uh, like uh, about eight uh, uh, prospective uh, screening campaigns. Uh, in each of them, there was reasonable heat rate, and uh, we identified uh, in all of them, we identified identified some microbolic compounds. Uh, uh, but uh, recently, um, uh, there are like completely new opportunities in this field uh, that uh, sort of a lot of things sort of click together, uh, including availability of structures, uh, like for GPCRs, it's especially uh, notable in the last 10 years, uh, basically, uh, all uh, GPCR family is covered now. Um, and CryAM played a huge role in this. Um, uh, there are mixed uh, sort of feelings about uh, AlphaFold 2 in terms of uh, uh, like a, a suitability for screening. Uh, so we'll skip this. Uh, the uh, methods of uh, docking, and I don't even uh, like include uh, what um, Eugene uh, described today in terms of fried and uh, reach. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. So uh, fast algorithms for this. Uh, uh, computing power uh, from GPUs to cloud computing. And uh, what is most importantly for us, uh, great explosion in size of um, the uh, com uh, chemical space uh, readily available for synthesis on demand chemical space. Uh, in our case, we mostly focus on um, and we collaborate with Anamine and ChemSpace uh, working on <coughs> real space. Okay, so uh, let me uh, take uh, a couple minutes on uh, like focusing on this. So uh, what is the difference between like screening a million compounds and uh, billions of compounds and uh, just wanted to reiterate it. We, we all know why it's better, but uh, there is one reason uh, uh, that uh, probably underappreciated. So uh, imagine that you find the, find the heat in uh, 10 million compound space, uh, which is in stock. Uh, it, Imagine that it's it's a decent heat and it can be uh, optimizing to lead and uh, to drug and like triangle. Uh, the the problem is each step uh, in this optimization it is done in uh, like general chemical space and requires uh, custom synthesis most of the time. So which is expensive and uh, takes a lot of time and we have a lot of. So um, we learned this hard way uh, in many cases. Uh, now, uh, how the uh, on-demand libraries changes. So 
uh, real space, as we know, it's uh, like now about 180 optimized reactions applied to uh, more than 100,000 building blocks. And it gives rise to currently uh, real space is uh, 30, 30 uh, billion compounds and like the different counts, uh, 60 billion compounds. Uh, which are virtual, but they are real in terms that they can be synthesized in three, four weeks uh, with 80% success rate. Uh, the library maintains drug likeness and diversity. Again, uh, there are some caveats in this, but uh, uh, they are uh, manageable. Uh, what is uh, also important at uh, this um, uh, 125,000 building blocks is just tip of an iceberg. Uh, there are uh, 620, uh, the last count, a million of tangible building blocks. And if you count those and all the combinatoric there, it's 10 to 15. It's very, very uh, conservative sort of approximation. I would say 10 to 16, 17 of tangible real space. Now, if you find heats in, for example, uh, 30 billion compounds of real space. Uh, the pass, uh, the optimization pass to drug, uh, to lead and drug actually lies in the same space, uh, which is very easy to uh, synthesize and uh, sort of an ocean of compounds that uh, can be systematically uh, screened and optimized. Uh, so this uh, uh, started uh, with Sanamin Real. Uh, actually, uh, it's interesting. We uh, I still remember uh, uh, like consulting for Malsoft. We uh, we first uh, contacted uh, Anamin, I think in two thousand six. Uh, they had Anamin Real was uh, twenty million compounds only, and they cost four hundred bucks a piece. So it was not very uh, uh, sort of uh, economically viable, and uh, we froze it for some time uh, to return lately. Okay, so um, now. Uh, if you deal with, for example, 30, 30 billion uh, compounds, uh, the computation itself becomes a bottleneck, and like you can estimate that the cloud uh, with uh, bottom uh, line rates, it would be like a million dollar uh, uh, endeavor to uh, screen all of them. So there are uh, several acceleration uh, approaches were proposed. Uh, one of them, uh, like virtual flow, was uh, published in Asia in 2020. Uh, very uh, simplistic sort of flow of, from very uh, rude and uh, fast um, algorithms, uh, like uh, fast versions of Autodoc. Uh, to uh, like it, uh, iter iterating through more uh, sophisticated algorithms. Uh, the uh, next idea was to combine uh, 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 docking with uh, neural network learning, so iterating between um, docking subset of uh, the library and uh, training. Uh, on based on this subset, uh, applying this to whole library and uh, iteratively uh, narrowing down uh, the number of compounds. And uh, just presented by uh, Eugene uh, Gigascreen, I stole the slide from him uh, uh, that uh, doing this even more effectively. Okay, so uh, the uh, the issue with this, uh, you still have to enumerate the library uh, and to generate conformers, and it also scales linearly with number of compounds, more or less. So, if you increase uh, ten times the library uh, to uh, like tens of billions of compounds, is already a problem. Hundred billions is even more problem, and we want to. Uh, be able to screen 10 to 15. So the idea was to uh, use uh, the intrinsic modularity of those real libraries. So, uh, okay, the, the structure of uh, the library for 
this is two uh, component sort of reactions. So you have a scaffold with R1 and R2. Uh, and if you enumerate, for example, thousand of R1 and thousand of R2, it's like million compounds. And uh, so uh, it takes quite some time. Uh, so what if you are uh, not enumerated at all, but uh, enumerate only one side first uh, of the scaffold, uh, dock those uh, partial compounds, or like we call them minimal uh, enumerated fragments, uh, into uh, the pocket, and then uh, select the best, and then uh, enumerate those with uh, the second uh, Sinton a second building block, and uh, uh, it's uh, apparently requires instead of a million uh, docking, uh, it requires only uh, like two thousand dockings. Uh, uh, and if you go into three component reaction, then it really becomes uh, like a huge advantage. Uh, so instead of a billion compounds, thousand times thousand times thousands, uh, fully enumerated, you have uh, like three thousand of docking for uh, full compound. So uh, the the scheme looks nice, uh, but like. Uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, uh, these uh, nice pictures of uh, sort of uh, fitting the puzzle with compound. The real life is uh, much more complicated. So, and uh, and Arman at the back of uh, uh, spent some time of scripting. Uh, scripting. Five minutes uh, with, left, semester. Uh, within the CM. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, the uh, first uh, enumerated library and very important uh, the uh, so while while we fully enumerate one of Sinton, second one should be capped uh, in a very specific way uh, to avoid uh, like wrong interactions. So then uh, this library ML compounds. So basically, it can be uh, uh, eleven billion compounds can be compressed in six hundred thousand compounds. It docked. The best compounds selected, uh, enumerated, and then redocked, filling uh, the whole pocket. So the uh, the first uh, sort of sanity check was to uh, see whether these first uh, like initial steps of docking of mail actually select for something and enrich the library. So we compared the uh, like at the last step of enumeration compared with a random subset of uh, uh, this and. Uh, we see that uh, the there is great advantage in terms of like better scores and more compounds for uh, pre-selected library in this way. With enrichment factor here is about forty. Uh, it's important that not all the poses are productive. Some of them sort of st uh, stuck in the corner, and uh, we manage to uh, like we, we we have several ways of. Uh, removing them and so this uh, adds like several fold enrichment uh, so for two component reaction to 50 here 450 for three component reactions so uh, yeah, of course this is not a lossless uh, algorithm we're losing some compounds but uh, the uh, it's great gives a great speed up so this was applied to uh, cannabinoid receptors uh, and uh, we found uh, a lot of submicromolar heats uh, from uh, the first run and then they were optimized uh, to uh, sub nanomolar heats uh, after the first uh, SCR by catalog again uh, uh, staying in the same on-demand space or just ordering compounds from enemy uh, so this gave uh, compared to uh, standard VLS of subset, diversity subset of uh, real library was 70 times faster, six times better, uh, and uh, led to better compounds. So it was that in the same paper, it was tested on uh, kinases, uh, uh, giving uh, single digit nanomolar compounds, so like all the bad. Uh, so we continue development of uh, Vicintus uh, one is uh, now uh, 30, 60 billion, uh, actually 173 billion compounds. Uh, 
uh, we uh, upgraded the uh, post selection uh, algorithm that is done automatically based on uh, pocket geometry and this uh, we're preparing manuscript for this uh, we applied um, uh, we continue working on uh, uh, like the development of uh, vsynthes one with uh, camp space and amin and Molsoft. Uh, we applied to um, in, uh, uh, quite a few collaborations within USC and uh, Andrew mentioned we started their new center for uh, new technologies and drug discovery and development and we collaborate with other universities uh, as well um, so in uh, probably we have like about a dozen of projects now and half of them we already have uh, uh, sub micromolar targets, uh, so, sorry, sub micromolar heat. So um, I'm not ready to disclose this target yet, but uh, it's going great. Um, so uh, just to uh, give like a little bit uh, idea of scale. So that was um, uh, three different libraries published uh, by ChemSpace in, in, in one week, advertised by ChemSpace in one week. So uh, library for pre-plated HTS standard uh enumerated library of uh, chem space and we seen this uh version design specifically for uh, uh, real space version design specifically for the synthesis called x real uh so just just to give the idea of uh like scale <laughs> it, it scales about this uh way um so uh and it's not only about the size it's also um not like uh, they're working on increasing diversity of uh, this real space what is important uh the physical screening of uh this uh microscopic quarter million compound uh, uh space uh cost about hundred thousand k uh like hts and uh the cost for screening of this um it's about 20k uh so okay, so uh, the uh, in terms of diversity, apart from working with uh, with Anamin and Camp Space on this, uh, we also partnered with our friends um, at the USC Valerie Falken, uh, uh who is an expert. And, uh, he barely missed this Nobel Prize on click chemistry. Uh, recently, so they develop a new generation of click reaction suffix uh, reaction, uh, and uh, we build a library of uh, like available um, um, building blocks that purchasable building blocks that comparable compatible with uh, uh, these two reactions based on triazole and zoxazole. Um, and these were screened at the same cannabinoid receptors. Uh, about 140 million compounds. This actually was generated four years ago. So um, I bet this is uh, at least more than billion compounds now, if you do it now. Uh, so um, we didn't have the synthesis, so it was just a regular DLS screen. Um, synthesized 11 compounds, and uh, six of them were hits, and uh, three of them were sub micromolar hits, the best. So uh, this actually results comparable to uh, the Vicinthus screen. So we think that this is sort of preferable scaffold. Uh, uh, just one note, uh, this step, uh, synthesis, uh, took three years. So this is downside. And uh, it usually takes uh, uh, two months uh, to, to synthesize things with Xenamine. Okay, so uh, we are uh, are so some of some of the earlier uh, screening campaigns uh, actually are going into uh, like very uh, thorough development. Uh, so this is example of angiotensin eighty two uh, receptor where first uh, nanomolar uh, uh, micromolar heats were. Uh, um optimized to uh, 100 nanomore and then a lot of synthesis uh, so that that's when the our grant with uh, uh, an INDS kicked in uh, and they synthesized uh, like totally all, almost thousand molecules 
optimizing it not only for potency but uh, also for admin and PK properties. So now we have a uh, preclinical candidate that works in neuropathic pain uh, better actually than uh, the previous uh, clinical candidate, AMA401. So our compound lasts longer and uh, has stronger uh, response. It has uh, all the um, PK properties and everything to be considered a uh, clinical candidate. We target IND next year. Okay, so uh, and uh, we see we, we had the audacity to uh, write a paper for a review for Nature with that was out. Oh, I forgot to update this. So uh, it's out uh, um, the end of uh, April. Um, sort of outlining how the physics based and deep learning based uh, screening uh, can help in drug discovery and how uh, the um, uh, on demand spaces can actually drive uh, this pipeline from uh, discovery of first hits to uh, clinical candidates and how it speeds up the um, discovery. Okay, and uh, I Wanted to thank uh, my group, uh, very talented uh, uh, people and students, uh, our collaborators. Uh, uh, I'm very grateful to uh, Malsoft for uh, providing uh, ICM and uh, wonderful tools and collaborations, uh, ChemSpace and Anamine. And most importantly, and uh, one of the reasons I'm here is we're looking for postdocs.